Hi, this is Reuven Lerner, and I am here to solve another Python problem that I received from a subscriber to my Better Developers list. This problem comes from Yair in Israel, um, and his problem is that he wants to pickle a Python object that uses external libraries. Um, okay, so there are a few different pieces to this that I want to go through. First of all, we'll talk about pickling. Second of all, we'll talk about how we can get our own objects to be pickled. And third of all, then, we will see how we can pickle an object that contains an external library. And truth be told, it should just work. But let's figure out why that should work. First of all, what the heck is pickle? Well, the idea is that if you have an object um, of any sort, so if I say here d equals a1, b2, c3, and I want to store this dictionary, this object to disk, or actually send it over the network, um, I can do what's known as serialization or marshalling, meaning I can take the object, turn it into a string in a special format that on the other end can be turned from a string back into our object. Now you might think, oh, well, I can just like do you know, print D and then I see what it is and I can use eval on that. I can do like you know, an eval of stir D and I'll get back a dictionary. And that is true, you can do that. But when things get more complex, if you don't just have strings and lists and dictionaries and tuples and sets, then things get well, more complex, like if you have your own objects. And pickling is the way in Python that we take our objects and we turn them into things that are then, well, unpickleable. And why don't we call it serialization or marshalling in Python? I actually don't know, but pickle is the pretty standard way to do it. So I can say import pickle, and pickle comes with the standard library. And then I can say pickle dot dump s of d. And what dump s of d says is, give me, I want you to turn this object into a pickled object. And you see we get back this binary thing, binary looking thing, and in fact it has a b at the beginning, b for a byte string, meaning that this is not a string of Unicode compliant characters, this is a string of bytes. Um, if you're coming from Python 2, then in Python 2 strings all contain bytes, and we need a special Unicode string to contain Unicode. In Python 3, then strings contain Unicode, and we need a special string to contain bytes. So this does not contain um, specific Unicode characters. It's just a bunch of bytes that goes from the beginning to the end there. Um, okay, well, if I want to, I can say here s equals that, right? And then we can look at s, and we'll get our byte string there. And then if I want to, I can say pickle dot uh, load s, load from that string, and look what we get. We get our dictionary back, and we're not getting a string that represents the dictionary. We're getting a new dictionary based on our old one. So if I say here uh, z equals pickle load s, so now I can say is z equal equal to d? Yes, they have the same values, but z is d. It is not the same dictionary. I have two dictionaries with the same keys and values, but they are not the same object in memory. So load s does not sort of overwrite the original dictionary. It doesn't have a pointer to the original dictionary. It can't. It's creating a new dictionary based on it. Now, dump s and load s allow us to work with strings, or more precisely with byte strings. But what if I want to store it to a file? Well, then I won't use dump s and load s. I'll use dump and load. And so I can say here that out file equals open. Now let's say my data.pkl. And pkl is my personal way of saying I've pickled data. This is not a standard extension, but it should be because the world should listen to my suggestions more. Anyway, so I'm going to open a new file and I'm going to say it's for writing bytes. Notice, I have to say W because I'm going to be writing to this file and B because I'm writing a byte string. And this way, the file object won't look for and require that I have a Unicode string. So I now create that file. Now I can say pickle.dump. Notice dump.dumps. And I'm going to say here D once again and out file. And now we have saved our data to outfile. But have we? No, because we haven't closed outfile. So now I'll say outfile.close. And of course, if I'd used with, then I wouldn't have needed to worry about this. And now if I say cat in Jupyter, cat of my data.pkl, let's take a look at that. And it looks totally ridiculous and gross and like we can't read it. This format is not meant for humans to read. I should add, by the way, that earlier versions of Pickle, Pickle and Python 2, defaulted to use a string version, uh, something that was actually pretty readable by humans. In Python 3, that's no longer the case, and we now use a non-backward compatible version of Pickle. If you insist on having it be text uh, readable, human readable, then you can change the version of Pickle you're using to save with. I don't see any real reason to do that. So how can I read it? Well, I can say in file, equals open of my data.pkl and I'm going to read bytes now. And now I can say pickle dot load of in file and I'm going to say z is this. And now if we say what's z, well z is that. 
All right, and so is Z equal equal to D? Absolutely it is. Z is D, of course it's not. Once again, I have created a new dictionary based on the information in the file. Um, so this is how I can store things and how I can load things with Pickle. Great, until here, hopefully fairly straightforward. The thing is, what if I have my own class that I've created? How well will it work with Pickle? So I'm gonna say your class, foo. I'm gonna say your def in it. So here's self dot uh, self x y. I'll say self dot x equals x and self dot y equals y. Fantastic. And I can say f equals foo of 10 and 100, 200, 300. Very exciting object. If we say vars of f, we will see that indeed x is 10 and y is 100, 200, 300. So I have an object now. What happens when I, I'm just going to copy my code from before because I am an expert programmer and that means I just copy code again and again in my career. And I'll say outfile.close. And now I'm not going to dump d, I'm going to dump f. And sure enough, that seems to have worked. And can I read it in? Let's find out. I'm going to read this in here. I'm going to say in file equals open, and I'm going to say z equals pickle load. And now what is the type of z? Type of z is of type foo. And if I say what are the vars of z, what do you know? It worked just fine. So I can indeed pickle and unpickle. I can dump and I can load classes that I've created. So long as your class uses only built-in Python objects, you are fine, you are safe, it will work great. Um, I should add, by the way, that it's very important when you load the data that you already have the class defined. So let's say I write a new program, a totally new program, and my first line is import pickle. My second line is basically pickle.load. I will have problems because Python will know that it's of type foo. It's, a, it's an object of type foo, and the class foo has not been created. So you need to define the class foo before you can load it in. Okay, so where where is yeah, your problem? Um, well, his question was basically, what if I say f equals foo? I'm going to say here, import numpy. This is an external library, not an external library, one that works with in C, it's written in C. And I can say a equals numpy, well, I'm going to say import numpy as np, because that's what people do. np random randint from 0 to 100, 20. And now I have 20 random integers in a numpy array. It is not a list, it is a numpy array. If you don't know what numpy is, don't worry about it. It's an external library, it's an external package. And now I'm going to go through my whole thing again. I'm going to say here, f equals foo of 10 and a. And so now the vars of f are x is 10 and y is this numpy array. And now, can I pickle it and unpickle it? No errors there in the pickling. Do we have any errors in the unpickling? No, and the type of z is a foo. Okay, and the vars of z are 10 and a numpy array. And if I say z of y, I get my numpy array. Sorry, that should be z dot y. And if I say z dot y, you know, z dot y, uh, I don't know, uh, um, mean, works just fine. The methods work, the data works, it all works, works fine. So if you want to use Pickle to store and retrieve data, it should work for any classes you write, including if you are using externally defined classes. However, I can't promise that every single package in the Python universe follows the rules and does things the right way. It is extremely possible that there are packages that you've used which will not work this way. Key among them would be something that uses C or something that like uses a low-level system um, because then, well, you can't necessarily pickle it. And there are other things like file objects that cannot be pickled. So it's not a guarantee that everything can be pickled, but every built-in data type can, and most packages will try to do that as well just because it makes life so much easier. All right, I hope this answered your question. I hope this was interesting to the rest of you. If you're interested in subscribing to my free weekly newsletter, Better Developers, you just go to learner.co.il slash newsletter. And if you have questions that I can maybe solve for you in this format, send them along to me at reuven at learner.co.il. Thanks a lot.